Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, Big P here, you know don't you, you know. Let's go balls deep on a few questions today shall we. First question is, will Stubbub ever be looked into, you know, and the goings on around it, you know, with the people copying sponsorship off it in the boxing industry, tickets being given to Stubbub, you know, the thousands of tickets being given to them, and if the fans want to get tickets to the good shows, they've got to pay Stubbub money which is a secondary ticket market you got to pay extra you know 200 pound tickets are 300 pound we've seen 2000 ringside seats for Wembley Joshua fights against Klitschko for 5000 things like that you know you get a thousand tickets like that well 3000 pound profit that's 3 million pound where's that money going uh, it all seems to have gone quiet doesn't it the old stub up situation Nobody seems to mention it. We certainly don't see any of these YouTubers asking it because uh, they don't want to lose their access, do they? But what's going on with Stubbub? And will we ever get to find out the real goings on about what was going on? Uh, personally, I don't think we will. I think it will all be swept away. Uh, what were the boxing board doing about it? They didn't do anything, didn't they? Didn't they? Because they're weak. They're weak, but I want to know what's gone on with Stubbub. But it is what it isn't. Uh, boxing expenses. Uh, do small old boxers cope turning pro? Uh, I don't know. If you've got a bit of talent and you've got to learn your craft and you're coming through and you're building a record, I think it's hard at a small old level. I mean, I'm not going to mention any names, but I know two journeymen that are driving around in £80,000 cars because they're getting out there twice a month, you know, at three grand a pop, that's six grand a month, plus they've got jobs in the day as well. They just turn up with a kit and fight. So journeymen are earning more than prospects. I mean, and they're not training as much, are they? But it's, that's just how it goes, isn't it, I'm afraid. We need the journeymen so the other guys can practice their art, I suppose. They call it move arounds. I don't agree with them. Uh, so, it is what it is. Something else I don't agree with as well. Promoters putting fighters on ticket deals. Uh, we've had this conversation with Steve Rafe yet. Yeah, I can see where he's coming from, but too many promoters can turn around and say, yeah, but we haven't got TV, so we've got to do ticket deals. Well, do your job and get on your Twitter accounts, your Facebook, your Instagram, Spotify, uh, and all these other things that are on social media. Get posters put up, get billboards put up. I mean, I've put a couple of billboards up myself, haven't I? Well, not physically myself, but I've had them put up and paid, you know, because I were hoping to get certain people to come on the channel and do an interview, but I'm over it now. But you've got to try and think outside the box. Uh, so, promoters need to get rid of ticket deals get rid of them, if fighters can sell tickets yeah but they sh it shouldn't determine what they earn because the promoters all live in big houses and drive big cars don't they and have big holidays so why should the fighters have to train, eat, sleep and drink boxing and then be chasing around with tickets don't agree with it promoters job is to promote alright this is where I clash with promoters your job's to promote, you've got a TV deal, promote Get yourself out there, Eddie Hearn does it. He sells our side of every show, doesn't he? Obviously because he wants to keep the TV money and let all the ticket money pay for the fighters and that's a good idea, that. So he, he works himself into the ground, doesn't he? Other promoters, do they push the boat out as much as Eddie Hearn? I say no, although Bricktop's been doing loads of interviews of late, and not he? We can't get him off social media. So it is what it is. Uh, Will Tony Bellew ever resign his position at Sky after the the, the rimming he's been doing is, is shocking. I want Tony Bellew to go and speak to somebody, whether it's a doctor or a psychologist or is it a psychiatrist. I don't know, but I think he needs to for the, for the blatant... It's blatant lying, blatant bull that he comes out with. And I should have pressed the buzzer then, shouldn't I? Blatant... 
that Tony comes out with. Uh, then we've got the narratives that he's pushing, and he's Mr. Contradiction, isn't he? But I want Tony Bailey to go and see somebody. Tony, I know you're watching, or people around you will be watching. Go and get help. There's help out there, and I wanted help. I went and took advice from a doctor. Got a problem with, with weight issues, with, with drug issues, uh, with uh, fitness issues. You go and see people. If you've got a car and you bump it, you go to a car body shop, don't you? If your door falls off at home or you've had a bit of a barney with hearing doors and you kick the door down one night, you say, open this door, you left key in and you take door off injures, what do you do? You go and see a joiner, don't you? Right? That's what you do. If somebody uh, comes to your house and they trip over one night, over your radiator, right, and bump their head, where do they go then? They go to hospital, don't they? Right? So, it is what it is, isn't it? So, Tony Bell, you, if you've got a problem with your biasness, you need to go and see a psychologist or whatever. If you want a loaf of bread, Tony, what do you do? You go to a baker. If you want meat, you go to a butcher. Alright? If you go to a gay bar, you ask John Fashino or Philip Schofield or Auntie Elton, Elton John. They'll show you where a gay bar is. If you've got a problem with matrimonial bias, go and see a psychologist, Tony. Alright? It is what it is. Uh, Tyson Fury's gloves, people have asked me about that against Wilder fight, it's been and gone now, I'm not really bothered about it, if he cheated he cheated, if he didn't he didn't, but who cares, so I don't think he cheated personally, no I think he's, yeah, he's got a lot of flicking style hasn't he, so if his glove were loose, I don't think it makes much difference does it, if a floppy soft glove's loose, I think it's it's got no, no fist in it has it, so I, I ain't got a problem with that, uh, there's a referee there to do his job, isn't there, so... Errol Bomber Graham, 60, well done Errol Bomber Graham, uh, for getting to 60, you've had a tough life. Uh, I want to know what people, are, what the boxing family are doing for Errol Bomber Graham, what, what's Johnny Nelson doing for him, what's Sky doing for him, I remember when Johnny Nelson used to live in Errol Graham's house, they used to go drinking around Sheffield and people used to say, Johnny never had a name then, he would always, who's the big black fellow we had, Obama Graham? That was Johnny Nelson's name. And then of course Johnny jumped on back and Nazim Hamid, didn't he? And Johnny's a piggybacker, isn't he? So it is what it is, isn't it? But, uh, but like I said, uh, we wish Bomber Graham all the best, probably the best guy to come out of the Ingle gym. Let me just get something clear about the Ingle style. You can ask Glyn Rhodes about this, Mick Mills. Brian Anderson, ask any of them. The Ingle style is not from Brendan Ingle. Let's just get that straight. Bomber Graham brought that style from Nottingham. All right, so just, let's just get that. Let's just get that correct. Brendan Ingle, a fantastic uh, trainer and a great person, but the Ingle style was not the Ingle style. It was the Bomber Graham style. Go and watch my Glyn Rhodes interview on the Boxing Royalty Collection on my channel on playlists. The Bomber Graham style. So all you YouTubers, and you know who you are, stop going on about the Ingle style. Okay? It's the Bomber Graham style. Alright? I'll repeat that again. It's not the Ingle style, it's the Bomber Graham style. You get that, didn't you? You did hear that, didn't you? Did you hear it, Dominic? I know you're watching. So, are we now in an era where it matters so much to tell this great story about the fighters? Do views matter more than talent? Uh, I, th I think I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. Uh, Anthony Yard, Joshua Boazzi. They're very, very talented fighters. Uh, but they don't get a lot of views, do they? Dave Allen get blows them away with views, doesn't he? Uh, Savannah Marshall and Chantel Cameron. They've got bags of talent and of elite fighters in their own right. But Shannon Courtney blows them away with uh, views. 
Is this where boxing's heading, where views are more important than talent? I mean, why why can't the commentators as well when they commentate shut their mouths? Why can't they shut their mouth? Why can't Bean shut his mouth or Macklin or you know Bell you John Rawlins? Shut your mouths and let us watch the boxing. We don't want to hear about uh, what they had for breakfast or it, if, the, if, if they're popular on Twitter and, you know, rough, tough, rugged, durable, all action, compelling. We don't want to hear that, Bean. What I do want to hear, though, Bean, is where you buried bodies. So just hand your send in to the nearest police station and take your laptop, Bean. But uh, it is what it isn't. Uh, but like I said, you know, I look at Savannah Marshall and how hard she trains and you know, we're talking about sick, a girl here who hardly says anything and she's a specimen of a fighter, isn't she? Six foot, 12 stone, bench pressing 100 kilo, 12 seconds for 100 meters. She's a freak of nature. She's mastered her craft. She's a freakish puncher, but yeah. She don't get no views, does she? She don't get... Nobody's talking about her. This is like the bogey woman of the division. She can do middle, super middle, light, heavy. And she'll take anybody out of them free weights. Nobody's giving her airtime. Chantel Cameron, another massive puncher. But nobody seems to give her, give her a look in, do they? Nobody mentions their names. Why is that? Probably because they don't play the game with media, but... Who wants to have a camera stuck in your face or be on social media all the time when you can be at home resting? So we have to get a balance right, don't we? There has to be a balance. But it is what it is, isn't it? Lastly, Barry Hearn, a.k.a. The Fisherman's Friend, a.k.a. Old Whiskey Nose, has been let out of the cupboard or the wardrobe. Every now and then he pipes up with his fishing rod. He's got plenty to say for himself. Is he the stumbling block to uh, Sir Edward Hearn working with Bricktop? Is he the rotten apple in the dressing room? Is he? Oh, we don't know, do we? But is he the El Hadji Durf? Remember him who played for Liverpool? He was a rotten apple, one, and they got rid of him. But is Barry Hearn the stumbling block? Because all we're hearing now is silence. And the silence is deafening. Bricktop's wanting a meeting where Eddie Hearn's gone AWOL. What's going on? So we've got to turn up the heat on them and get them working together. I want to see Joshua. I want to see, sorry, Joshua Fury. I want to see Joshua Boatsy against Anthony Yard. I want to see Anthony Yard against Callum Johnson. I want to see, Ho see Jose Burton against Anthony Yard. I want to see these fights. That light heavyweight division is is a great division at the moment for Britain. It's a, There's a pool of talent there. And I want to see them fights. I want to see Liam Williams against Beefy Smith Trilogy because I think they've got unfinished business. I want to see these fights. All right. So peace out. Keep on trucking keep sporting boxing thank you very much for liking and subscribing to the channel and sharing because i get to see on analytics who follows me and who shares it and all that it's like big brother isn't it watching you but we have somebody showed me how to do it every time they come and see me they put it on and i say who's been sharing it and what percentages are going to this and that it's all very interesting obviously for somebody like me because i've got a bit of ocd going on i know in numbers and that but i think it's all interesting and I'm enjoying it. The main thing is I'm enjoying it. And uh, so, all right. So if anybody's got any questions, fire them over. PokyCorner at mail.com. Uh, if you're leaving abuse on comment section, she'll just block you. Or, uh, I'll, or Cam will block you. So that's just how it goes, all the removed comments. Because we're not here to be abused, are we? We're here to tell the truth and push boxing forward and sift through all the shit. That's what we do, don't we? Because we don't like... Oh, we don't like it, do we? Alright? Don't have nightmares. Have a nice day.